London, England, a modern city built on thousands of years of history. From Millennium Bridge to Big Ben, from the London Eye to Buckingham Palace. Today, we're covering some of London's most iconic landmarks. So pour yourself a cup of tea, sit back and relax, because today on Tyler Travels TV, we're in London. London is the capital of England and was built along the River Thames. The tallest structure along the banks of the River Thames, and one of the newest, is the London Eye. Constructed using parts from all over Europe, this 443-foot tall Ferris wheel has 32 air-conditioned pods, each representing one of the 32 boroughs of London. Smart travelers avoid lines by booking their tickets online and picking them up at one of the self-service kiosks. 25 guests at a time line up to board the capsules for a 30-minute ride. Interactive guides built into the capsule walls will identify what you're seeing on the horizon. The ride is so smooth you hardly feel like you're moving. But once you reach the top, well, let's just say the view is unbeatable. With the iconic skyline of London laid out before you, it's not uncommon to feel like you're on top of the world. Big Ben and the Palace of Westminster, St. Paul's Cathedral, Westminster Abbey, and so many more of London's classic buildings are laid out in front of you, just begging to be explored. But for now, just enjoy the moment. Watch your step as you disembark and exit through the gift shop. Since 1837, Buckingham Palace has been the official residence and principal workplace of the monarchy in London. Every year, the palace plays host to several official and state events given by Her Majesty the Queen and other members of the royal family. Every day during the summer and every other day during the winter, guests can gather around to watch the changing of the guard, a tradition that epitomizes the pomp and circumstance of the royal family. This fully functional palace is comprised of 775 rooms, including 19 state rooms, 240 royal, guest, and staff bedrooms, more than 90 offices, and 78 bathrooms. If you're visiting during late summer or early autumn, be sure and get tickets to view the royal state rooms, the working heart of the palace. This ornate golden fence is known as the Victoria Gate, and directly in front of the palace, this ornamental statue, is the Victoria Memorial. Both tributes named after Queen Victoria, the beloved monarch who reigned from 1837 until her death in 1901. This nearly 80-foot tall monument is the tallest monument to a king or queen in England and is topped by a gilded bronze winged victory. The monument symbolizes all of the attributes that Victoria found to be most important, including courage, truth, justice, progress, and peace. And don't forget to exit through the gift shop. Adjacent to Buckingham Palace is the charming St. James Park. The oldest of the capital's eight royal parks, its small lake and large old trees make for a pleasant stroll on a nice day. A wealth of waterfowl such as ducks, swans, and even pelicans call St. James Park home. And don't forget to make your way to the Blue Bridge for some excellent views of Buckingham Palace. Arguably the most recognizable landmark in all of London, Big Ben stands tall along the River Thames. 
a historical sentinel conjuring images of our favorite movies, TV shows, and books. What may surprise you, however, is that Big Ben is not the name of this iconic clock tower. It is actually the Elizabeth Tower. Big Ben is the name of the bell that rests behind the clock face. The Elizabeth Tower and Big Ben are attached to the Palace of Westminster, which is home to the British Houses of Parliament. Sharp-eyed fans of the popular TV show Downton Abbey may also notice that the Palace of Westminster bears a striking resemblance to the real-life Highclere Castle. That's because shortly after completing work on the Houses of Parliament, architect Sir Charles Barry remodeled Highclere Castle and incorporated much of the same design in both. Another design of Sir Charles Barry is the famous Trafalgar Square. This site has played a part in London's history for centuries. It's played host to innumerable cultural events, performances, public demonstrations, and celebrations. Just a stone's throw from Big Ben and the Palace of Westminster, this square is central to all of London, making it an easy walk to Covent Garden, Buckingham Palace, or St. James Park. Standing proudly in the middle of the square is Nelson's Column, built to honor Admiral Nelson for his victory at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. An 18-foot-tall Admiral Nelson proudly stands atop his column, while scenes depicting his battles are displayed below. At the base of the column sit four massive bronze lions, practically begging to be in a photo with you. Two fountains flank Nelson's column, offering a calming oasis during the winter and a welcomed respite from the heat during the summer. Magical mermaids, dolphins, and other sea creatures spout water into the basin below, creating an extremely relaxing ambiance. At the north end of the square stands the National Gallery, one of London's most important museums, with paintings spanning six centuries. Admiralty Arch at the south end of Trafalgar Square marks the entrance to the Mall, the famous red road that leads to Buckingham Palace. Westminster Abbey was founded in the year 960 and is one of the most historically significant churches in all of the United Kingdom. Westminster Abbey, which is a part of the Church of England, is not to be confused with Westminster Cathedral, a Catholic church in central London. Smart tourists arrive early and avoid weekends as lines can wrap their way around the block. Cameras are not allowed inside as this is still a place of daily worship. From the coronation of William the Conqueror in 1066 to the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton in 2011, Westminster Abbey has been involved in some of the most significant moments in history. The Abbey is the final resting place for 17 monarchs, but it's not just royalty who are buried here. Over 3,300 people are interred in the Abbey, including Geoffrey Chaucer, Charles Dickens, Isaac Newton, and Charles Darwin, just to name a few. The cloisters adjacent to the abbey were built between the 13th and 15th centuries and were the center of life in the monastery. Monks would use the area for meditation, exercise, study, and as a passage between buildings. This octagonal room in the east cloister is known as the chapter house. In the 14th century, the precursor to what would eventually become parliament would meet in this room before they moved across the road to the Palace of Westminster. Recreated ornate stained glass windows surround the room, casting a noble glow on the proceedings below. Original tiles dating back to the 13th century are still visible. Other medieval relics include these paintings from the 1300s, and this, the oldest door in Britain, constructed in the 1050s. Westminster Abbey is a true piece of history that has so many more secrets and stories to be told. Make sure it's high on your to-do list when you visit. Oh, and as always, exit through the gift shop. If it's a storied past you're in search of, look no further than Her Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress, the Tower of London, 
a medieval castle in the heart of London with a bloody history. The Tower of London was established by William the Conqueror in the year 1066, but nearly a thousand years of history have culminated in the behemoth construction you see now. These holes, known as murder holes, would be used to throw any manner of terrible things at invaders, including arrows and hot oil. The tower has functioned as a royal residence, 